Hello everyone, welcome to Court with Chrissy. Bad news, I'm feeling a little under the weather and I'm fairly certain my doctor would diagnose me with a man cold. The good news, they haven't developed a vaccine yet to prevent criminals from catching charges. I hope you like it. Court with Chrissy is now in session. Paul, well, you know there's a new felony charge, right? Yeah, he's already been arraigned on it. Okay. Make sure you're aware of it. It's the felonious assault, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're not going to be asking for any bond or anything, so. No, I just want to make sure you're aware of it before the hearing started, because others haven't been. As the Karens will tell you, I'm aware of most things. Well, good. <laughs> good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. We have Mr. Williams now. I see his name. I just don't see him yet. Hello. Hello. Oh, you don't need me. Hello. Welcome oh. back. All right. We're back on the record in case 24-4451-FY. Um, Mr. Robert, yes, ma'am. You're uh, you are back with us, and we have a second case that we'll get to as well. Mr. Connolly, did you have an opportunity to speak with Mr. Robert about these cases? I did. Uh, Mr. Robert understands the nature of the offenses in each of the cases. He understands his rights in the matters. Uh, he will waive a reading of the information this morning. He's going to um, stand mute in all in both files to all counts, and he is requesting court appointed counsel to assist them if your honor feels he qualifies. I know that he currently has Mr. Kane uh, in Antrim County for another matter. Okay, very good. And, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing, your honor. He's not going to waive his right to have his prelim within 21 days. I explained it to him, and he said he wishes to have it within the timeline. Thank you for that. Okay. So first things first, I know you discussed this with Mr. Connolly, but I want to remind you that you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. You have the right to a trial. You have the right to the assistance of an attorney and to have the attorney present for all questioning and any subsequent court proceedings. If you find that you cannot afford an attorney, the court may appoint one to you at partial public expense. So to that end, we're going to complete a petition together. I have to swear you in and ask you a series of questions. If you would please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the information you're about to give me is the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you, sir. So um, I have... Um, a mailing address from previously for yeah thank you all right and um you're currently incarcerated in the antrim county jail uh do you have an expected out date at this point no ma'am okay thank you do you have any source of income or support no do you have any money in a checking account, a savings account, any cash on hand, or any digital 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 currency? Did was did you did you respond to that, sir? I said no. Okay, thank you. And um, do you own? Um, Let's see. Let me look back also on, it seems like we did this not that long ago. Yeah, you uh, set bond on this over a month ago. Uh, that was a, a different. No, it case. was, it was the, oh yeah, okay. And the retail fraud, you're right. But as far as the court appoint a court appointed counsel, we did do this together. All right. Um, what's your legal marital status? 
I'm married. And do you have any source of employment whatsoever? No, ma'am. I've been in jail for six months. Okay. All right. So the court is going to appoint an attorney for you. We'll request that it's Mr. Kane so that you have cohesive coverage. That is handled by a third party, but hopefully we can um, have the same okay. coverage with that. And the next step in the process will be a probable cause conference on October 2nd. The prelim is going to be scheduled for October 9th, but we do um, in fact have on the record that you do not waive your 21 days. As far as bond goes, We'll set this at a $50,000 10% bond. Ask that you not return to any family fair retail establishments, that you not use or possess any weapons of any kind for any reason, that you not display any threatening, intimidating, harassing, or violent behavior toward anyone that you remain respectful of all court employees, service and care providers, including law enforcement and correction staff, and that you comply with all orders related to any open cases in Michigan. All right, and then case 24-4399FY. We will appoint counsel to you in this matter as well. Asking that it's Mr. Kane, so you have cohesive coverage. We'll schedule a probable cause conference for October 2nd, as well as a preliminary examination for October 9th, noting that you do not wish to waive the 21 day rule. And we'll continue bond as it stands. Do you have any questions right now? Uh, I guess I, I, I do. Uh, I know on the, your, this is the drug offense you're talking about right now, ma'am? This, yes, this is case 24-4399FY. Okay. All right. Uh, I was fingerprinted and got bond, had bond hearing on that over a month ago. And I'm just now being arraigned. Is there, I'm just asking you a question. So is, is there a certain amount of time they have to uh, for you to arraign me on these charges? I kind of want to not do once. Not once bond is set. Uh, so so when when you originally were arrested on these allegations, uh, the prosecuting attorney had seventy two hours to file a complaint, uh, that, which they did do. And once bond was set, you you had every right to post that bond, um, but the court notified you uh, in due course for when the arraignment process would take place, which actually took place today. Yeah, it took over a month to do. That is correct. I haven't had received any discovery pack or any information on the alleged crimes that have been taken. So I just feel like I need to request a, uh, what is it, uh, I'm requesting the lawful discovery to be mailed directly here. If the prosecutor can hear me, I'd like that, please. So that is something that will be handled by your attorney. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, okay, hold on. What, what, excuse me, ma'am. What if I, I, I don't want to, uh, can I represent myself on this case and get the discovery directly to me on this case instead of uh, getting Steve Kane, please? I would like to represent myself on, on this case. 
So rather than have court appointed counsel, you wish to represent yourself in this matter? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So both cases are just one. Just for this case or also on just this the case. Just this case. Previous I'll case. Okay. All right. So we can um cancel the the appointment of the court appointed attorney and note that you're representing yourself and we will send the notices directly to you. Those dates will remain in effect until they are um, addressed by you and or your, your counsel in the other case. Thank you for participating, and we'll get this paperwork sent over to you, okay? Uh, the discovery will be mailed to me then now? So this is just the the arraignment process. As far as discovery, that's um, something that you'll have to uh, file the appropriate paperwork. And um, are you certain you don't want to have an attorney assist you. I'm trying that. to, I'm trying to hire one as we speak, but I am I got, I mean, I have until what, October 2nd to, uh, to my next court day. So I need ample time to actually go over that paperwork myself. So, uh, I, that's why I'm asking okay. for it to be mailed to me here directly or just brought over here to me. Okay. Well, so this is the time and place for arraignment. Um, so we'll, we'll need you to, um, draw up the, the appropriate paperwork for the next step in the process. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Robert. I have a ticket here uh, from this morning charging you with operating a vehicle under the influence of alcohol uh, or drugs and a chemical test refusal. Did you get a copy of the ticket yet? I haven't gotten a copy of the ticket. Okay. The maximum penalty for that offense <laughs> He is six months in jail, $1,625 fine, and a seven-year license suspension. There's a mandatory minimum penalty of 20 days in jail, $525 fine, and a one-year license suspension. Any question about that charge? Um, I don't have any questions. I would also like to get an attorney as well. Um, I, I have a little girl at home, and her dad's on life support, and I'm literally the only person that can care for her. So... Are you, um, are you on probation? I am on unsupervised probation. Yeah, um, yeah, for the last charge. Yes, unfortunately, I'm here a little sooner than I would have liked to. Um, I had several calls yesterday from an angry ex-girlfriend <laughs> purposely trying to get me in trouble, so I feel like I should definitely get an attorney. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, do you live in Hebron? I do. Okay. I work in here. I have a great job. I Are you working? have never been in trouble before other than <coughs> the previous time. And unfortunately, she knows that is a really good way to get me in trouble. So I'm not exactly sure what to do, but um, I definitely want to get an attorney. And obviously, I have to be home to care for my daughter. If I have to lose my license and feel well, your license is suspended. Um, I, they should have read you the form. Yeah, yeah they didn't read me anything. For the test refusal, your license is suspended. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay, I'll release you on your recognizance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have position number two through four, Mr. Bolton. Two through four. Okay. This is uh, Monterio Bolton. We have three cases. First case, 
being 24 cr 6560 g He's charged with um, one count of battery family violence, one count of battery, one count of simple cruelty, and three counts of cruelty to children in the third. That offense date is March 14, 2024. The second case is um, 24CR006561G. He's charged with one count of battery family violence and two counts of cruelty. Offense date, July 30th, 2024. And the third case is position four. 24 CR 006562 G is charged with one count of battered family violence, two counts of cruelty to children, and that offense date is July 23rd, 2024. Am I right to assume these are all the same victims? That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. All right. But they're all different dates. Yes. Okay. This ain't no all typo. Right. Um, Second arrest, 2022 ag assault dismissed. He went to felony earlier and got no bond. So, so as expeditiously and quickly that you can do this uh, uh, state, uh, go ahead. Okay, I'll just go in chronological order of the events that took place. The first case is position two that occurred March 14th. The instant location is the victim in this case, uh, Nakara Sheets, stated the defendant, who was the father of her child, assaulted her during an argument. The defendant shoved her in front of their children. The fight ended and she went upstairs. The defendant then followed her upstairs and tried to take Ms. Sheets's car keys out of her hand, causing a cut on her right index finger. After he wrestled her for the keys on the sofa, the defendant then left and then returned and ran to the front window of the house where Ms. Sheets' mother, Bobby Sheets, was holding the window closed. The defendant forcefully pushed open the window, striking um, Miss Bobby Sheets in the face and causing a cut to her upper lip and nose, which was observable by officers when they arrived at the location. The defendant then entered the house and struck Nakara Sheets once again in the head. The children, um, a one-year-old with the initials MSB and a three-year-old with the initials SHB were present during the incident against both Miss Nakara and Bobby Sheets. The second incident occurred July 23rd, 2024, and that is position four. That incident location is a Lyft driver by the name of Paul Coleman called the police after he arrived to pick up Ms. Nakara Sheets. Mr. Coleman stated that he witnessed the defendant punch Ms. Sheets in the face for an unknown reason. Officers did observe swelling and redness to Ms. Sheets' face upon their arrival. Mr. Coleman, the Lyft driver, stated that the defendant punched Ms. Sheets um, and then pulled her off to continue to attack her. This incident occurred in front of their one-year-old and three-year-old as well. The second, the third incident, excuse me, occurred July 30th, 2024, and that is the same incident location as the first incident. This incident is position three. It occurred seven days after the incident involving the Lyft driver. Um, the defendant and Ms. Nakara Sheets were arguing when the defendant struck her on the left side of her face with an open hand, causing observable swelling. The children they share, the one-year-old and three-year-old, were again present, and Ms. Sheets was holding the one-year-old in her arms when the defendant struck her. Um, as pretrial stated, the defendant is in custody um, for two aggravated assault charges, 24 PI 006866 and 24 PI 006867. Um, the defendant is accused of shooting at a, firing his, yes, shooting at a Tim Timakez Garrison with a gun on September 12, 2024. He's also accused of pulling out a handgun and pointing it at Ms. Nakara Sheets on May 4th, 2024. The incident where he pulled the handgun and pointed it at Ms. Nakara Sheets happened um, in front of her sister, Ms. Shandria Sheets. The defendant, as pretrial stated, was arrested in 2022, um, and that charge was dismissed. That arrest was for shooting 
his gun close to Ms. Nakara Sheets' feet in the presence of her mother and I believe her father, Steve Sheets. The case was dismissed because the victim at that time did not wish to prosecute. So all of this to say, this defendant has a significantly violent history with this victim. And as we know, with cases like this, it just escalates each and every time. It's gotten to the point where the defendant is shooting at her. All of this is happening in the presence of their children. Um, and so there is a severe concern for the safety of this victim and also for the safety of her children. There is a risk that he will reoffend because he has done it numerous times. And there is a risk that he will intimidate um, this witness, as I'm sure is what happened when the case was dismissed in 2022. So given everything that we have in front of us today, the state's recommendation is going to be for a $25,000 cash bond, $5,000 on each of the four battery family violence charges, $500 on each of the eight cruelty to children charges, and $1,000 on the simple battery family violence. No further contact with Nakara Sheets, no further contact with Paul Coleman, no further contact with Bobby Sheets, Ms. Sheets' mother, no contact with the minor children um, that they share, no drugs, alcohol, or weapons, surrender all firearms to the Fulton County Sheriff's Office, and a stay away from the incident location, 1588 Ezra Church Drive. Okay, give me, um, you said on the breakdown with the 25,000, um, you said 5,000 on the each battery family each violence. battery family violence and that's two of them so that's 10 and then he has that's one he has two battery family violences right oh i'm not counting the fourth so it's three i'm sorry so he has i'm sorry it looks like the for position two, that's just a battery, not a battery family violence. So 5,000 on each. Well, I'm battery showing family two. Violence. Have you dismissed one? I'm looking at the calendar. Position no, so, two, the battery family violence and a battery. Yes. And so 5,000 on each of those. It's a simple battery family violence on there, too. Yeah. Would you like me to repeat the the breakdown? Please. So it's going to be 5,000 on each count of battery. And there's one straight battery. 5,000 on each count of battery family violence. And there's three counts of battery family violence. Tell you what, why don't you go for each case? Because we're going to have to do an order for each case and not collective. So let's start with position two. What is your recommendation on that one? Recommendation for position two is 5,000 cash on the battery family violence, 5,000 cash on the battery, 1,000 cash on the simple battery family violence, 500 cash on each of the four counts of cruelty to children. Okay. All right, so that's going to be a total then of 10, 11, uh, 12. Is that 13? 5, 10, 11, and 500 mm -hmm. times 4 is 2. Oh, that's 13,000. Hold on, that's 10,000. That case. Plus 2,000. Somebody help me with the math. Yep, that's correct. All right, That's so 13,000 cash on the first case. And All then right. position three. Position three, it's going to be 5,000 um, cash on the battery family violence, and then 500 on each of the two counts of cruelty to children. So your recommendation is 6,000 cash on that case? Yes, Your Honor. And then the third case, position four. It's going to be 5,000 on the battery family violence. And then 500 on each of the two counts of cruelty to children. All right. So that's 6,000 cash. So six. Six is 12. And uh, 13. 
So good. 25. It equals. <laughs> Look, that was a hard math exercise. It was a lot of numbers. Yes. And that's why I said we'll go case by case. All right. So that's the state's recommendation. 25,000 cash. And hopefully everybody was keeping up with the breakdown. And oh, I, I do have it written down as well. <laughs> you, Miss uh, Bridgewater? Yes, ma'am. I'm writing, taking notes as we talk. Good. All right. Go ahead, P.D. Cook. Yes, Your Honor, my client is 23 years old. He has lived in the area his entire life. He is not currently employed. We would be asking for a surety bond as low as possible. Beyond that, we would uh, just ask. Uh, we would uh, defer to the court's discretion. All right. Uh, he doesn't seem to get it, so I'm not impressed at all with his history and these cases. This is ridiculous that this woman and children have to go through this. This is terrible. Um, and I know he has no bond in felony, but I'm I'm inclined to go with the state on the uh, $25,000 cash bond and we'll make sure that this woman and children can live in peace and safety. Um, so you heard the breakdown, correct? First case is uh, 13,000 cash. Second case, 12,000 cash. Third case, six. Um, I'm sorry, I said that wrong myself. Third is 6,000 cash. Yeah, second and third cases are 6,000 cash. And the first case is uh, 13,000 cash. So there's a total of 25,000 cash amongst the three cases. Stay away from um, Nakaria Sheets and her two minor children. And stay away, I'm sorry, no further contact with Nakari Sheets and her two children, two minor children, no further contact. No further contact with Bobby, is her last name Sheets? Yes, yes Your Honor, same last name. With, and no further contact with her mother, Bobby Sheets. He is to stay 200 yards away from her, no contact by phone, third parties, or cell text, nothing. Stay away from her job. Stay away from the children's daycare if there is such a place. Stay away from her home and her mother's home if they're different places. Stay away from these incident locations. No drugs, alcohol, weapons, or guns while on bond. And your honor, there was also a stay away from Mr. Paul Coleman, who was the Uber driver who reported one of the incidents. Oh, no further contact. No further contact with the Uber driver, Paul something, Coleman. All right, Your Honor. Can I can I ask again what that uh, on that first case, which is position two? Uh, what was the uh, it was a cash bond, but what was the amount there? I think the other two were six. Thirteen, thirteen thousand cash. Uh huh. Thank you. Okay. Let me make sure I have these numbers on the right places. On the battery family violence, was that five thousand on the cash? For the position one, yes. No, for position two. Well, it's the oh. first of his three cases. Oh, uh, position two, which is the first okay. case. Yes. And so 5,000 on, 5, on each of the batteries, which is a 10. And then 1,000 on the simple. And then 500 on the four cruelties, which is a total of 2,000. Okay, gotcha. Right, to make 13. Gotcha, thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, Robert Purdue. Good afternoon. Sir. Are you Mr. Pardue? Yes, I am. All right, well, Mr. Pardue, you're here because Judge George issued a warrant for your arrest. Looks like August yes. of last year. And uh, because yes. your case was assigned to Judge George, the only authority that I have is to set a bond for you and uh, get it back in front of him. So, 
First and foremost, what is your current mailing address? Well, my address is in Alaska, but I, I do have a job that I'm supposed to report to, the Haunted Hoochie in Pataskala. Yeah, it's about that time of year. The, it's the, it starts on the 19th, and it's six weeks of... Are you, the guy I, that, I are you the guy that was on city council in Alaska? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, it, it's never good when a judge remembers. You realize that, right? Yeah, but I came back here to take care of this in person, and I just hadn't made it into court yet. And I, I am here I am here to work. I do have a job that's starting on the 19th, and it's at the Haunted Hoochie in Pataskala, and that's... They said that I'm okay to stay there for the next six weeks of work. So. Okay. Now, this says that you were arrested over on um, Hebron Road. Did you turn yourself in at the Heath Police Department? Uh, they actually picked me up, and I told them that I do have a warrant, and I told them I'm, I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm here to take care of this business and go to work in Petascala. Okay. I just, had, I just hadn't made it into court here because my friend's ride... Is an RV, and he had left me behind. So, w what's the connection between a guy from Alaska and Central Ohio? It's the gathering of the juggalos at Legend Valley. I come here every year. I've been coming here for the last twenty years, spending my money in Ohio because I love it here. All right. And I am currently trying to move here to go to college. Also, um, do you have a um, a local mailing address? Um, so, my friend said I could use his address. Do you know if he has an apartment number or not? Uh, it's his mother's house. Okay. Now, these charges were filed, it looks like, back in August of last year. Uh, let me guess, right around the time that the uh, Juggalos were coming through? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. It was pretty tame this year. We didn't have hardly any kind of cases. Yeah, I, I was there. <laughs> and I, I stayed behind and I cleaned up after too, so they actually hired me to work there at Legend Valley also. Okay. Like I said, I'm here to be a productive member of society, and I am attempting to go to college here also. All right. Well, the last time you were in front of me, which was almost a little over a year ago, uh, mainly because of, uh, of the circumstances, I set your bond at $100. I mean, these aren't the most serious yes. charges. Um, obviously, that bond was revoked when you failed to appear and the warrant went out. So I'm going to reset a $100 cash to your 10% bond. It would cost you about a little over 10 bucks to get out, I should think. Um, I can't just straight up OR because it's been too long and, and, and you do have ties out of state, but I'm also setting it in an amount which I think you'll be able to post so you don't have to sit there until your case gets resolved. So, any questions today? Um, no, I, I just, like I said, I'm here to handle my business and I'm not trying to cause any trouble. Okay. And well, I'm the next time you come into court, you'll either have a trial, they'll dismiss it, or you'll do a change of plea and this whole thing will be over. Any other questions? Um... No, uh, thank you so much for your help. All right. Well, Mr. Pardue, you may go with the officer. Good luck to you. Thank you. So we are now going to go on the record. And Mr. Burdett, are you available? So, yeah, it got back in and it's turned my right camera. I know. It, it, <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. That's It's just a crazy thing. <laughs> Well, this is going to be a case number 242514 FY2, Stephen James Lasowski of Sockville, Wisconsin. Is that your address, sir? That is correct, Your Honor. All right, then this is a case alleging um, count one, resist and obstruct a police officer causing serious impairment, count two, assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder or by strangulation. Count three, attempting to um, disarm a police officer. Count four, receiving and uh, concealing stolen property, i.e. a motor vehicle. Count five, assaulting and uh, resisting or obstructing a police officer. And we're taking note that this is habitual offender second offense notice. 
Now present with us today, Mr. Burdett as the arraignment attorney to assist you through this first hearing of the court, and also our prosecutor, Mr. Tristan Chamberlain. Uh, Mr. Burdett, have you had an opportunity now to speak with Mr. Lazowski regarding the alleged charges, his possible, uh, the possible sentence on these and his Miranda rights? Um, yes, I have, Your Honor. We'll waive any further reading of the charges, any further reading of his rights. Uh, Mr. Lazowski is going to be pleading not guilty, and he's requested a court appointed attorney. All right, Mr. Lazowski, please raise your right hand. Do you me swear and affirm the information you're about to give us the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, we'll be asking you for questions for the uh, request for court appointed attorney and also for bond, possible bond setting on this case. What is your phone number, sir? Um, I don't currently have possession of my phone because it was lost in the woods during the uh, scuffle with the police, but uh, my phone number was 920. All right, and give me a second, please. What is your email address? My email address is. Are you renting, buying, living with parents or paying room and board to someone? I will be living with my parents. Well, I will. Yeah, that's that's where I'll be returning to. And that's what that address is in Sockville? Correct. Are you single, married, divorced or separated? I'm single. Do you have any dependent children living with you? I do not. Were you working? I was, yes. Where? I was uh, working at Hayden Water Company. That was in Plymouth, Wisconsin. I do not know the phone number for it offhand. Are you able to return there for work? I would, I would be able to return, I believe, yes. How long have you been working there? I've been working there for a couple of months. Um, they were pretty hard up for people, though, so they said that they were trying to keep any and all employees that are willing right, to so work two there. months. You were working two months. Uh, at that current company, yeah. What was your take-home pay? I mean, are you paid hourly? I was paid hourly. My take-home pay was about $600 a week. So what's your hourly rate? Uh, it was about $17. Do you have any other source of income besides that? I do not know. Do you own any real estate or a vehicle? I do not own any real estate and I do own a vehicle. It's a 2004 Acura. Um, it is in pretty rough shape, so I can't imagine it would be worth any more than $750. What's, uh, do you have any money in the bank? I do. I only have about $100 though. All right, the court will appoint an attorney to assist you through this case. You'll be receiving that information sometime in the next few days. Now, that does bring us to your right to have a bond on this case. So, uh, Mr. Burdett, how would you like to uh, present for Mr. Uh, Lazowski? Um, yes, Your Honor. He, Mr. Lazowski does have um, uh, employment uh, back in Wisconsin. He is living with his parents. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have any contacts here within the state of Michigan. Uh, I am unsure of whether Wisconsin has a hold on him uh, in regard to any uh, pending charges that are out in Wisconsin. I believe there's two. Uh, we'll just leave the uh, bond at the discretion of the magistrate. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chamberlain, did you have something you'd like to present for bond? Yes, Your Honor. The four things the bond is reviewed for. The first is severity of fence. We have um, body cam of Mr. Lazowski running at a law enforcement um, officer with a knife and dove at him. There are uh, one officer broke his hand in the fight. He reached for the um, gun and almost uh, disarmed the law enforcement. There was also the receiving and concealing as well. These are serious charges. These are assaultive charges. 
The second factor that we look to is his criminal history. The one that I think is most important is in 2020, he received or he was convicted of a suffocation or strangulation in Wisconsin, I believe. The third factor is his flight risk. Uh, he was found in the Sleeping Bear Dunes running from uh, two different we'll call it set of circumstances that were felonious or alleged to be felonious in Wisconsin. There was a manhunt that had between 14 and 16 officers with four or five agencies two days prior to this arrest where they didn't find him. Um, he uh, was, uh, the, the whole thing was him fleeing from his responsibilities of lesser felonies. The final one is public safety. For public safety, uh, again, he has very assaultive crimes. The body cam shows that he was essentially attempting to do suicide by cop. And in order to achieve those gains, or that goal, excuse me, that he was willing to um, assault officers uh violently in order to uh, achieve those means. So I think that he is a threat to not only others, but a threat to himself as well. I do want to note that the feds have dropped their two-year charge for fleeing and eluding felonious uh, due to our charges here. Uh, so there is no hold from the feds on him. As for uh, any um, Wisconsin holds, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know. I would, uh, my best guess would be yes, there is a hold, but I don't know that. I don't know if they're going to extradite or things like that. Um, for those reasons, I request an extremely high uh, bond. I think 150,000 cash is appropriate. He needs to be in jail. He is a flight risk. He is a danger to the community. He has no ties to this community. Um, and I don't foresee any. Uh, low amount that will reasonably keep him in check with law or um, without being a danger to himself or others. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Prosecutor. Uh, Mr. Lazowski, apparently there is um, some, something to do in 23 last year in Wisconsin. Are you on bond or probation for that case, sir? I am on bond for that case, yes. You're on bond for that case? Yes. And are you allowed to leave the state of Wisconsin while you're on bond? I was not told whether or not. I Well, I, I may have been, but I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not well, sure. Usually standard bond conditions um, require that you not, that you remain in the state where the um, <clears throat> offenses occurred. So most likely you're not to be leaving the state of Wisconsin. All right. Uh, given the information from the prosecutor and also the information in the multiple police report here, my goodness, um, there is an issue with the severity of the offenses. And there is a video showing some of the uh, alleged uh, activity, which would lead us to believe that there is certainly um, some guilt associated there. Um, as far as the flight risk, yes. Uh, I would say that there would be a flight risk in that uh, you were not to leave most likely the state of Wisconsin, but here you are in Michigan. So we have no ties to the community. Um, you were trying to avoid, apparently, the um, officers who were trying to do their duty. There are serious charges here and there are serious charges in Wisconsin. You do have a significant criminal history. So we are going to be setting a cash bond on this. Standard bond conditions will apply. You may not leave the state without permission from the court. <clears throat> uh, you're not to possess any alcohol, illegal drugs, marijuana, mind and mood altering substances. Do you uh, take any medication, sir? I wasn't, but I am currently. Um, I take Strictera and Abilify. That's kind of my whole, my whole thing. If, if sorry, if I'm allowed to speak extended, I should ask if I am. May I well, explain? I just, 
Well, uh, all we're asking is if you take prescriptions, you're going to need I, to, okay, you're going to need to provide copies of those to the court. All right. That's going to be a requirement. So you're going to need to somehow arrange that. Um, <clears throat> now, you will be subject to discretionary testing for drugs or alcohol at this time. And um, that is, if anyone in authority requests that you do a test, you must do so. You are um, not to possess weapons of any kind, no threatening, intimidating, harassing behavior towards any persons. You are to be respectful of all court staff, law enforcement, and care providers. Now that basically means if an officer wants you to do something, you must do so. You're not to operate a motor vehicle without a valid license, registration, insurance, and not uh, with alcohol or drugs in your person. You're not to operate a motor vehicle unless that vehicle is in your name or you have written permission from the owner to operate that motor vehicle. We are not to um, have any contact with a Mr. Paul Shallop. You're not to be within 500 yards of wherever that person might be. And do we have a, an address for that, uh, Mr. Chamberlain? I don't, but I would also like to add Deputy Ryan Dumond. Okay. All right. We can certainly add um, Mr. Dumond along with Mr. Chala. Now, as far as the 500 yards goes, um, if Mr. Lazowski, you are if, if you're in custody, obviously that 500 yards isn't going to be um, uh, isn't going to count on on the deputy if he happens to be in the law enforcement center at that time. So you wouldn't be in violation if he's there and you're there at the same time. You understand that? I do. Your Honor, what I would suggest is that he not be allowed to go to um, Sleeping Bear Dunes uh, Park and not be allowed to go to Benzie County, as that is where um, the two officers work, respectively. Uh, Benzie County is not on his way. If he does choose to go home, um, he would go through Grand Traverse. So I think that those are both reasonable expectations. I see that, yes, some of this uh, did happen at the, the National Park. So we are going to prohibit you at this time while on bond. You're not to go to Sleeping Bear National um, Park. And uh, that is also going to include Benzie County. There would obviously be no reason for you to go through Benzie County for any reason if you were to return home. There is a way to go home um, yeah. and, not, and not go through Benzie County. <clears throat> All right, I think that just about covers the uh, conditions at this time. I do want to look at one other thing, though. We are going to order a benchmark drug screen. Do you, did I ask, do you have a medical marijuana card, sir? I do not. All right. While on bond, there is no use of marijuana whatsoever, as well as any other controlled substances. Based upon whatever might show on a benchmark drug screen, we could be adding randoms at a later date. So your bond on this um, is going to be a $150,000 cash bond. With all the uh, stated conditions. Now, sir, you do have the right to have a probable cause conference within 7 to 14 days of today. So we are going to be setting that for the 4th of October, and that's at 8.30 in the morning. That is an in-person hearing here at the courthouse in Sutton's Bay with you, your attorney, the prosecutor, and the magistrate or judge. Now, following that conference, within 5 to 7 days, you have the right to have a preliminary exam. That preliminary exam is going to be scheduled for the 11th of October at 11 o'clock in the morning. Now, these notices are going to be coming over to you at, while you're at the jail today so that you know when and where you're supposed to be. Again, that last hearing, the preliminary exam, is an in-person hearing. So, again, you, your attorney, 
will need to be at the courthouse in Sutton's Bay to meet with the prosecutor and the judge. Are there any questions from anyone regarding the buy conditions or anything else? Your Honor, I have one more request. If he does it or is released, I'd request a GPS tether. Oh, let's see here. Well, given the seriousness of the assaults, et cetera, yes, a GPS tether would be warranted. So, um, Mr. Uh, Lazowski, should you postpone, you would have to have a GPS tether affixed prior to any release from jail. I can't foresee myself finding out, but will do. All right. Well, you won't need a GPS as long as you're resident in our jail. Okay, any other questions? Thank you very much, gentlemen, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Take care. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.